Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to do a review of the Phoenix FD20 2AA Focus Flashlight. Now this one is fairly new from Phoenix. What I have laid out here is what comes in the package minus the quarter that's there just for size comparison of the head. Take care of that. Now in the box was standard Phoenix lanyard which is a little bit different than the last one I got. It opens much wider, so it's easier to get your hand through. Uh, two AA batteries, specifically those two, came in the box with it, and that's just an extra O-ring and rubber tail switch and the typical Phoenix, uh, Phoenix brand uh, generic holster, the belt loop on the back. And go ahead and go over all this. And this one's a little bit different. But uh, I will say that the holster actually fits the light better than a lot of them do. There's not a lot of extra space left over. And it goes on the belt. Fits just fine with a typical leather belt. Now I bought this light to see if it might replace the light I had been using for work, which is a Nightcore MT2A, also a 2AA. I like the 2AA size for work. It's just easier to handle when I'm doing stuff at work, right? Uh, I will say I like the Nightcore uh, lanyards better. They just uh, they don't get caught up in the Velcro from the holsters better. But comparable uh, size, outputs, and battery types both will run on alkaline double A's, but both manufacturers recommend that you use uh, high quality NIM nickel metal hydride batteries, rechargeables, so you're in a loops and a loop pros, that type of battery. And I'm going to shout out the back of the box here. Get the mode run times. And then at the end of this, I will go ahead and add on uh, some drop test and then some waterproofing test. Just throw it in the sink with water, let the water run on top of it and see if it actually stays on. Uh, I got this light in the mail today and I had a chance to use it for work tonight and it functioned very well as a work flashlight. Now some things that it is lacking, there's no tail stand at all. You, when you set it down you can actually feel it set on the button so it will not tail stand out at all. No real anti-roll, there's not even a pocket clip included so that was in the past my workaround for anti-roll was just throw the pocket clip on there. Uh, if you, you can see, it does have little flats on it on the bottom and then kind of on the, under the head there. It, if you set it on that, it will stay put. But if it starts rolling, it doesn't really catch it. So there's that. Not a big deal, not really. So why is this a focusing flashlight? Well, you can change from spot to flood, just twisting that. You can see the head moves. You're doing that. And I can't really turn it on because it will, but you can see inside there. And it's just 360. You don't have to turn it back the other way. You can just keep turning it one way. You can turn it back, it doesn't matter either way. Uh, got some uh, presumably cooling fins here and it's got the knurling says Phoenix FD20 of course uh, there's your tail switch it's a flat tail switch you've got the uh, side things here that helps a little bit with accidental activation and you've got your lanyard holes there uh, one other thing that's missing is momentary on but I bought this for a work light, so I'm not concerned with that. I'll probably miss it a little bit. I do use it sometimes, but th this is a work light. So if you're using a work light, you don't want something that might, you know, you're getting in and out of your work vehicle. You don't want something that you might bump. And when you sit down in your seat and then it just stays on because of the momentary on. So there's no click to hear or feel. It just stays on. And if it's daylight, you're probably not going to see it and your light's dead and now you need it and you don't have it because it's dead. So no momentary on. So I'll go through the modes. It's going to get bright. You got the single click there and then it's just a, a tap really. It's not even a like a half press on the switch. 
You can see it getting brighter. That's about three feet off the table. This is the low here. And we'll go through with the uh, ring there. And you can see that spot just spread out. And then keep twisting and it comes back to a spot again. Go back the other way, the other way. So no matter how you do it, it's gonna go ahead and it'll just adjust the beam for you. So some of the other things that I liked about this light, part of why I wanted to buy it, was this is not just waterproof, it is actually rated as dustproof IP68. Uh, I work in an environment that isn't always dusty, but it becomes very, very dusty at times. So it was appealing for me, and it was a good excuse to buy another light, right? So, but you've got your IP8 waterproof, two meters, and then you've got the uh, the rest of the rating there, and it's dustproof. So I, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna be putting that dustproof part to the test, and I'll do another video that will be a brief comparison uh, between the MT2A and this. Uh, so far, I like it. It it is a bit more expensive than the MT2A. It's, it's not super expensive, definitely less than your average Surefire net. So thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by again. Check out some of my other videos and feel free to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and leave your feedback.